Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And truly, it is a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I know for me, it is just to stand here in God's presence. I'm feeling good, feeling really good. And understanding how God continued to work in my life, how God continued to heal our bodies. God continued to be a part of our existence, even when we don't recognize and realize the movement of God in our lives, God is still present. And I stand as a witness today to show you that God is still moving, God is still working. Amen? So I just want to welcome you to our worship service this morning. Those who are here on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether you're struggling, whether you have different religious beliefs and background, you are welcome in this place of solace. And you might wonder why we embrace you with diversity and understanding. Because God loves you. God created you. And because of that, we love you because you are God's beautiful creation. Amen? Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements. They're printed in your bulletins. We'll meet after worship for um, Donuts with with Dion. We'll have our, our discussion, whatever path that may lead us to, whether it's on the sermon or something that we studied or something that came up this past week. We will definitely take time to have that discussion. Our youth is doing their, um, their study or their learning across the street, and they're still um, teaching on the armor of God. I think today is the, the breastplate of righteousness. So that's their study on today. Our quilters will meet on Wednesday, so it will be good to see the quilters on Wednesday. I don't believe there are any other announcements. Of course, mark your calendars for August the 25th. We're still planning the trip to um, Grafton River Cruise. Oh, Emmanuel Fellowship will meet on um, August the 1st at 11 a.m. in the reception room. So those who are part of Emmanuel Fellowship be in that place at 11 a.m. On the uh, sick list, I want to add um, Minister Kimberly McKenzie to the sick list. Of course, she stood in my stead last week, but now it's her turn. Um, she's not feeling well again. Um, she was, uh, she took a, uh, eventually took a COVID test this week, and she realized that she had COVID. So she's recovering from COVID, and we were kind of taking care of each other. And, you know, things work, but God is still good. So pray for her. I want to also lift up Bill Price. Bill Price has been on our sick list for some time. That is Nancy, our Remish cousin. Unfortunately, Bill passed away, so keep uh, Deanne and the entire Price family in your prayers as you pray this week and the weeks to come. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with heavy hearts, seeking your divine healing upon those who are sick. We know that you are a God of compassion and mercy, and we trust in your power to make the impossible possible. We pray for those who are suffering from physical illness, that you may ease their pain and grant them strength and courage to endure. Give them hope and reassure them that of your unwavering love and healing touch. We also pray for those who are experiencing emotional and mental illness. May you bring them comfort to their troubled minds and guide them towards finding inner peace and restoration. Lord, we ask for your wisdom and guidance for the medical professionals who are tirelessly caring for the sick. Grant them the knowledge and the skill to provide the best treatment for those in need. We also lift up to you the families and friends of the sick. May you give them strength and support to stand by their loved ones and to trust in your divine plan for their healing. We believe that all things are possible through you, dear God. 
May your healing power be upon all those who are sick and in need. In your mighty and holy name we pray. Let the church say amen. Let us begin our worship. Please join me in the call to worship. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. His marvelous works among all the people. He is to be feared above all gods.
Let us pray. Great and mighty God, we seek your presence among us. We strain to hear your voice, and it so often gets drowned out by the noise of the world. We pause to consider your works, your word, and your way. Speak to us now in spirit and in truth. Open your hand and our hearts that we may join in this moment of holy encounter. Forge us as community committed to follow the path Jesus has marked for us. Amen. Uh, the reading comes from John 6, verses 1 through 14. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. Please join me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Lord God, we confess we fail to recognize the bounty around us. We are not satisfied. We never have enough. We consider what we have received and what we have entered. Our label is too little rather than sufficient. We need to cultivate our imagination and our faith to observe abundance and opportunity rather than scarcity and efficiency. Help us to comprehend that in your kingdom, the fragments you have gathered are more than enough for flourishing. Beloved, you are enough. God's grace, strength, love, and hope meet you with sufficiency. Through God's sustaining power, you can gather the fragments that make our lives beautiful in God kingdom, God's kingdom real in the world. Amen. Him and saw a simple 
Thank you so much, Leslie. Amen. It's a beautiful song. A lot of meaning. Every time I hear our selection, I want to kind of start over there. Instead of, instead of what the Spirit has prepared, but somehow in this moment, those two will come together for us. In our hearts, that song and God's Word will come together and unite and give us a fresh anointing. Amen? So you heard the gospel reading. Um, you heard it from John's gospel, uh, chapter 6, verse 1 through 14. So this morning, I'm going to kind of hover over verses 12 and 13. So when they were satisfied, Jesus, which is he, told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had 
eaten, they filled 12 baskets. So for the moments that are mine, I would just like to preach on this subject. More than enough. More than enough. Let us pray. Eternal God, it's preaching time. God, I have um, meditated and prepared, and you have been in my preparation. Now, God, I know that you will be in my proclamation. Speak, Holy Spirit, because your children are listening. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on this place. Give us a fresh anointing, God that we may go forth in this mission that you have called us in. Give us boldness and courage, God, to do this work. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. So I'm going to give you a joke because I haven't had a joke in a long time. So because I've been off the circuit, the joke circuit for a while, I don't know about this one, but we'll see. So there was a new department store opening in New York. It's called the Husband Store. The Husband Store. It's a place where a woman can shop for a husband. The store has seven floors, which each floor having different qualities of a husband. The higher the floor, the better the husband. Makes sense, right? So if a woman wanted a, a better, better qualities, they would simply go to the next floor. But as the restriction states, once you go to the floor, you have to settle for that man. You cannot go back. So one woman came into the first floor. A sign said that this man, the men on this floor, have jobs. She thought to herself, that's a quality of a husband. She wanted to see, but she was curious just to see what the next floor had for her. So she decided to go to the second floor. As she got off the elevator, there was a sign saying, the men on this floor have jobs and love children. She thought this was even better, but she decided to go to the third floor. As she got off the elevator on the third floor, the sign says, the men on this floor have jobs, love children, and are good looking. She thought this is even better, but curiosity got the best of her, and she could not resist going to the fourth floor. As she got off the elevator on the floor floor, the sign said, the men on this floor have jobs, love children, good looking, and like to do housework. Wow, she thought. What more could a wife ask for? But she decided to go to the next level. The sign on the fifth floor, as she got off the elevator, said the men on this floor have jobs, love children, are good looking, like to do housework, and are very romantic. She thought to herself, how much better can this get? But instead of settling for a man on this floor, she decided to go to the sixth floor. The sixth floor sign said, the men on this floor have jobs, love children, good looking, like to do housework, they are romantic, and they love to shower their wives with luxurious gifts. She could not believe what this floor could offer her, and she could not think there could be anything else, nothing better that she had hoped for or even imagined. But she couldn't pass up the opportunity to go to the seventh and final floor. So as she got off the elevator on the seventh floor, the sign now says, there are no men on this floor. If you are reading the sign, please understand there are just some people you cannot please. So I think my sermon title is kind of leaning to more than enough, right? More than enough. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are, we're going to dive into a powerful passage that we all are familiar with, 
the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 1 through 14, about the feeding of the 5,000. And here John records a unique incident in the mystery or the ministry of Jesus. This event not only confirms the deity of Christ, but it also gives us a thrilling insight into the power of Jesus to do the impossible in our lives. This miracle is the only one recorded in all the four Gospels. It is a miracle that is performed not only in the presence of his disciples, but it involves personal participation of thousands of other people as well. This passage recounts the miraculous event of Jesus feeding 5,000 people with just five barley loaves and two small fish. It's a story that not only showcases Jesus' divine power, but it also reminds us, my friends, of his sufficiency in our lives. As believers, we must recognize that Jesus is more than enough more than enough to meet all our needs. This miracle occurred during a time when Jesus' ministry was gaining significant attention. Crowds were following him, and they were eager to witness all that he was doing, all his miracles, and to hear all of his teachings. As the passage says, the Passover festival was near, and it's a significant Jewish feast, was near adding to the more multitudes, so it was more people on top of what was already following Jesus. So amidst this setting, Jesus sees a physical hunger and decides to perform a miracle that would also reveal a deeper spiritual truth. See, when Jesus looks at us, when Jesus looks at us, Nancy, Jesus sees more than just what's on the outside. Jesus sees all that we need on the inside. So in in verse 5, we see Jesus' compassion as he observes the crowd. The crowd was approaching, and he knows that there was a need even before he expressed it. And this is crucial for us to to remember for us, that Jesus is always aware of our needs, both physical and physical. And spiritual. He cares deeply and is moved to act on our behalf. So when Jesus asks Philip in our text, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? See, he was testing Philip because Jesus already knew what he was going to do. But he wanted to see Philip's faith and understand it. Jesus already knows what he's going to do. He, he's going to highlight his divine for knowledge and sovereignty in this situation. But often in our lives, my friends, Jesus allows situation that challenges our faith. Our faith sometimes are challenged, but not to watch us struggle in that, but to draw us closer to him and to reveal his glory in us. So Philip's response was kind of pragmatic. It was focusing on the sheer impossibility of the task which there with, was with limited resources because he said it would take more than half a year wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. This response reflects a common human perspective. We often focus on our inefficiency rather than Jesus' sufficiency. We always look at the the least and not look at the bounty that we already have. Two weeks ago, we talked about spiritual blessings that we already have. But watch this. This text here has so many nuggets to it. Andrew, another disciple, brings a young boy's lunch with five barley loaves and two small fish. He shows up now where, I got a better idea, Jesus, five and two. 
though he, he, he thought his doubts that they were adequate, but he took a step of faith because you and I know that's still not enough, right? For all these people. But by bringing that what little to Jesus, it's an act of significance because it shows that even when we perceive our offering as in, insignificant, Jesus can multiply them for his purpose. So when you think you don't have enough, when you think you're not bringing enough forward, Jesus will take that because of your faithfulness and multiply it. Have you ever prepared Thanksgiving dinner and you're, you're cooking and you have no idea how many people are coming over, but you're cooking and you're wondering, is this enough? So you cook the sweet potatoes and the casserole and the turkey and the ham, all that stuff. And you prepare it. You sit it at the table, and people come over in and out all day Thanksgiving. The next day, they're still eating the same food. The same food that you thought you did not have enough. Three days later, you're still feeding people. How does that happen? Because if you had followed your mind, you would have ran to Schnooks and got another turkey and probably three more because you wanted to make sure you had enough. But when you are faithful in your, in your compassion and in your love for others, God will multiply it beyond your imagination. So Jesus, watch this. Jesus instructed people to sit down, organizing them in an orderly fashion. So this act itself is a demonstration of faith and an expression for an expectation, I should say, for a miracle. Because Jesus put things in order. Because there's an, a move of God, an act getting ready to happen. He takes the loaves, and the scripture says he gives thanks. That's the key. He gives, who does he give thanks to? Talk back to me. He gives thanks to God. When you give thanks to God, you are inviting all of heaven to come in and just blow it out of proportion. Yes. Jesus gave thanks and he distributed them to the crowd. He does the same thing with the faith. Watch the text. Jesus did the distribution. Because Jesus is more than enough. When he touches it, when it leaves from him to you, it's more than enough. More than enough. So Jesus did the distribution. And this, this miracle multiplication happens as Jesus gives thanks. He thanked the Father and he began to distribute it illustrating the gratitude and faith that God has for provision, the key to experiencing his miracles. Not only does everyone eat until they were satisfied, but there were leftovers. There were leftovers. This type of abundance signifies that Jesus' provision is not just enough, it's more than He will meet and exceed our needs, leaving us in an overflow where you would just be full. There's a story of a small village. There lived a poor farmer named Thomas. Thomas had a small piece of land on which he grew crops to sustain his family. One year, a severe drought hit the village and Many farmers had lost their crops. The situation was dire, and the villagers were worried about their survival. Thomas, however, had an unwavering faith in God. Every morning, he would go to his field, kneel down, and pray, Lord, I trust in your provision. You are the giver of life and the sustainer of life. Please send rain and bless our land. 
days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, but there was no sign of rain. The villagers began to mock Thomas, saying, why do you waste your time praying? Can't you see there is no hope? But Thomas continued to pray faithfully. He planted his seeds and tended to his fields as if he was expecting a bountiful harvest. His neighbors thought he was foolish. But Thomas believed in God's promises. So one night, one night, dark clouds gathered in the sky. And a gentle breeze began to blow. By morning, the villagers was blessed with a heavy downpour. The rain continued for days, rejuvenating the parched land. Thomas Fields, which he attended to with faith, began to flourish. His crops grew abundantly, and he had a harvest that was beyond his wildest dreams. The villagers were amazed and asked Thomas, how did you know the rain would come? Thomas smiled and replied, I didn't know when the rain would come, but I knew that God is faithful. I trusted him completely, and he provided. So my question for you, my friends, is how do we recognize Jesus as more than enough? How do we recognize the narrative of this miracle teaches us several vital lessons about recognizing Jesus as more than enough in our lives? Number one, Jesus sees and cares for our needs. Just as Jesus saw the crowd's needs for food, he sees the needs that we have and is compassionate towards us. He's intimately aware of our struggles, concerns, and our desires. Secondly, our resources are insufficient, but Jesus is sufficient. Andrew act of bringing the boys lunch with the loaves and the five fish, the loaves and the fish to Jesus, despite his doubts, teaches us an important lesson. We are called to offer what we have to God, no matter how small or insignificant it may be. God can use our little offerings to create miracles. Like the disciples, we often see our limitations and feel overwhelmed sometimes. However, when we bring what little we have to Jesus, we can, it can be multiplied beyond our imagination. Our insufficiency is an opportunity for Jesus to display his sufficiency. Thirdly, faith and obedience precedes a miracle. Faith and obedience precedes a miracle. The disciples had to obey Jesus. They had to obey Jesus' instructions and act in faith before the miracle could occur. Similarly, we must trust and obey Jesus. Even when we don't fully understand his plans for us, we still have to trust and obey him. Number four, Jesus provides abundantly. Jesus' act of giving thanks before the miracle reminds us of the importance of gratitude. A heart of gratitude opens the door for God's blessings and miracles into our lives. Additionally, the abundance of leftovers collected after the miracle reminds us that Jesus just don't meet our needs But he exceeds our needs. He provides an abundance. His grace, his mercy, his provisions are more than enough for every aspect of our lives. God's provision, my friends, is not just sufficient, but it is overflowing. When we trust God, we can expect his blessings to exceed our needs. So my brothers and sisters, the story of Thomas the farmer teaches us that trusting God without reservation brings about his miraculous provisions. Just as Jesus fed the 5,000 with 
five loaves and two fish, God can take our little and turn it into much. Turn it into so much that when we place our trust in him, he will just blow our minds. And I like to, when I say that, it sounds weird, but Jesus will blow your mind with the things that he will do in your lives. So as we go through our lives, let us remember to trust in God, trust in God's power and God's provision. Let us offer what we have no matter how small, no matter how small, but with a heart of gratitude. And let us have faith that God will provide just as he did for the 5,000 that Jesus will provide for us because he is more than enough. He is sufficient for every need we have. His provision is abundant. And when we bring our efficiencies to him with faith and gratitude, he can multiply them to exceed our expectations. So let us trust God, my friend. Trust Jesus' compassion and foreknowledge. Act in faith and recognize the abundance of his provision in our life. And may we continually look to Jesus, our all-sufficient Savior, and experience the overwhelming grace and blessing he offers. Amen? The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever and ever and ever and ever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with sincere hearts filled with gratitude. Thank you for the powerful reminder that Jesus is more than enough, more than enough for all our needs. In a world where we are constantly bombarded with messages of inadequacy and insufficiency, you assure us that in your son, we lack nothing. Forgive us for the times when our faith wavers and we doubt the sufficiency of Jesus. Help us to trust in his unfailing love and unlimited provisions, knowing that he has already overcome the world. As we bring our inadequacy to him, may we do so with faith and thanksgiving. Confidence that we know he will meet us at our point of need. As we experience the abundance of this provision, may we move to the instruments of his blessings to to those around us. May our lives be a reflection of the more than enough love of Jesus. May we continue to seek to glorify him in all that we do. And may he be the source of our every need. We ask this in the name of Christ, the one who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Generosity encourages us to consider what we have to share beyond our own use. May we exhibit the generosity of the young person found in the gospel narrative that shared their lunch with Philip survey the crowd of thousands. You see, this miracle starts with the act of sharing and faith. Let us now receive our offer.
Let us pray. God, receive our offerings and magnify them beyond our imagination for the benefit of your kingdom, this ministry, and your creation. Cultivate a heart of generosity within us and enable us to witness the abundance that can be found in the fragments that remain as a testimony to your power at work in us. Amen. Amen. I was singing that song the last five days. Because every morning I get up, I just think about Jesus and his goodness. And I just kind of go through my day and I just thank God for his blessings. Thank God for his provisions. Thank God for you. You all have shown me so much love. I appreciate you all so much. So thank you for those who have called and sent cards and I know you're praying for me because I can feel it. I can feel it. So thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart. I, I, words cannot express. Um, but before we um, dismiss, we have a few more shawls that was uh, knitted for us. So we're just going to bless these right now. God, we just thank you for those who have thought of not robbery to take time to, to sit and knit these shawls. God, we pray that whoever shoulders they cover, that they feel your presence, God. They feel your love. They feel your kindness. That whatever the situations that they're dealing with, God, they will be comforted. Because this is a ministry that we have set in this place to do. So, God, we thank you for allowing us with the resources and the skilled people to do that. So, God, we just thank you for everything and bless these shawls in your name. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May your homes be blessed. 
May your marriages and relationships be strengthened. May you recognize and realize that Jesus is more than enough. You have all that you need. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, you have the love of Christ weaving in and out of your body, the direction of the Holy Spirit guiding you, which is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. You are never alone because your God promised never to leave you or abandon you. This is God's promise to you, my friends. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you this day. Amen. Thank you.